friend <coughs> in yesterday's video we discussed regarding the Nidam Schroeder protocol of version 2 and we also discussed the major problem that is noticed with this algorithm so the major problem that is noticed with this particular protocol is that that is man in middle attack and a replay attack on this version so basically this attack is possible mainly because that the attacker can replay the message 2 which is supposed to be generated by the KDC the freshness uh, there is no way to identify the freshness of the message for a, a because of this this attack is possible now to overcome this particular problem the newer uh, the additional thing that what we added to the previous version is that adding a nouns r3 along with the identifications of a and b in the first message this is helping us to overcome this particular replay attack so by adding a nouns it is possible for a to identify whether the message is coming from a kdc or some attacker since this r3 is generated by a so kdc is encrypting this a using a secret key so because of which it is possible for a to identify the freshness of a message whether it is actually the current message or it is a previously created message now by doing so we can avoid this particular attack but still this version is not free from say flaws the major flaw again that is noticed with this particular version is same problem that what we have noticed in the version 2 that is replay attack but previously the replay attack was happening from say uh, say to hide a b but this time by by addition of this nouns is not uh, it is actually solving this particular problem but it is creating a new problem that the attacker can say pose himself as a a and he can initiate a communication with b so this is what is a problem don't notice with the version 3 and rest all the communications in this version is same as that of the version 2 so i will not go into a details of these communications now to overcome this particular problem also some modification again has done to the final version of nidam schroeder protocol so in the final version instead of sending a nouns in the first message so that nouns was generated by a now the nouns will going to be created by b and it will going to be encrypted by using b's secret key so this nouns which is created by b will going to be encrypted by using a b secret key which is known to a kdc actually this is a long term secret key of b now once uh, a gets this particular message too a will forward that message along with its own identi uh, identity and b's identity and newly created nouns to a kdc so now this particular encrypted thing even though if somebody hacks it they will only come to know regarding this particular encrypted version and it is difficult for them to decrypt it because it is encrypted using a secret key now moment kdc gets this information it will going to decrypt this nouns by using a b secret key since kdc is well aware regarding the changes that are happening in the secret keys of a and b so it is easy for kdc to identify whether it is actually b or not so based on that kdc will now going to reply back to a, a. now when it when it replies to a, a say it takes a help of the nouns that was created by b again that nouns will going to be encrypted by using b secret key along with a session key and a's identity so this whole thing will going to be forwarded to a, a. so apart from this information a will also get the session key information b's identity 
and newly generated nouns R3. Now this nouns was actually generated by A which is encrypted by using a secret key by KDC. Now in this whole activity KDC is not generating any nouns. So once uh, A gets this reply back, so A obtains this information because this whole thing is encrypted using a secret key and this particular information it is not possible for A to decrypt it. What it will do is it simply forwards this as it is to a B along with say the nouns which is again for authentication purpose of A and B. So this nouns will going to be now encrypted using a session key of both A and B. Now see this was the information which is encrypted by KDC and this nouns is encrypted by using a session key of A and B which is forwarded to B. Moment B gets this information, B decrypts this. Once it decrypts, it gets a session key. Using this session key, it is possible for B to decrypt this information. So once it decrypts, it comes to know regarding R1. So it decrements this R1 by 1. This is what is the procedure we have adopted. And it will also generate a new nouns. It will encrypt these two things using a session key again. And it forwards this whole thing to a A. Now here, there is one small mistake in this figure. So this arrow has to be on this side. Moment A gets this information, it decrypts. It will come to know that, so this is the one which is done by B because anyway it was encrypted by using a session key. And it will also do the same thing that it will decrement the R2 by 1 and it sends it back. It is something like an acknowledgement of receiving this. So moment the seventh message get exchanged between A and B, the authentication process is completed. This particular protocol does not have a flaws like earlier versions. It is totally fall free uh, protocol and this is used in many different applications. Now we will talk regarding Kerberos server. So how exactly this Kerberos protocol helps us to solve the problem of dealing with the multiple servers that we will go to discuss in this topic. Now to understand regarding the usage of a Kerberos, first we will consider a scenario of university where a multiple servers are there in the university and to deal with them we need a separate passwords. Now when it comes to a human being, to remember multiple passwords to deal with the different servers of university, say for example email server, uh, your database server and uh, say file server like this to deal with or to communicate with these different servers of university, if he tries, if he starts using a different passwords, then it is difficult for him to remember all those different different passwords. Now, here we are trying to solve this particular problem of a user by creating a single password by using a single password to deal with all the different servers that belongs to a university. So, how exactly this particular thing has to work is mainly because of Kerberos. Now, the single password, it's a job of a Kerberos to pass this single password to different servers so that user can easily access different servers using a single password. Now, in the background, it's a job of a Kerberos server or Kerberos protocol to pass these passwords from one server to another server so that user can access the services of different servers. To perform a job of transferring a password, Kerberos while performing these jobs, Kerberos do uh, take care regarding these issues. Say first Kerberos say it never uh, transmit a password in a clear form. All the time this password will be get exchanged between the servers in the encrypted form. And this server uh, Kerberos also takes care regarding say launch of dictionary attacks. And these passwords 
should be cryptographically transformed transfer transformed before being stored and these passwords are not allowed to reside in any machines more than few milliseconds say after the user enters it it will be allowed to be there in some machine only up to few milliseconds beyond that it is not allowed to be there in that machines by doing so so it can avoid these type of attacks and user enters his password in this type of environment only once during the login time this Kerberos protocol is developed by uh, Massachusetts, Massachusetts Institute of Technology MIT so actually it has a different versions the version one which is right now in the use is version 5 the KDC is based on DDAM Schroeder protocol that what we have discussed in the previous uh, chapter okay so basically it is not using those NIDAM Schroeder protocol as it is so this Kerberos it divides the KDC that is used in the NIDAM Schroeder protocol into a two logical units one is authentication server another one is ticket granting server so this job of uh, these two are helping us to deal with different servers one is authentication server and second one is ticket granting server now the authentication system using a Kerberos looks like this where my KDC got divided into a two logical unit one is authentication server another one is ticket granting server and say moment the client deals with these two servers moment say it completes the task of dealing with these two servers it will get an access to a different servers so actually this whole Kerberos system works in three steps three steps in the first step message one and two are get, getting exchanged between KDC and the client and in a step two message three and four are again exchanged between KDC and the client so but this time they are the message three and four are dealing with ticket granting server which is a separate logical unit of KDC and in a step three message five and six get exchanged between the server and a client now to start with actually C is requesting a ticket granting server that is C here indicates the client is requesting ticket uh, authentication server and moment it gets back a reply from authentication server it is free to communicate with TGS so the message 3 will be generated only the action of message 2 gets completed so then the client gets a permission to deal with TGS so the message 3 using a message 3 it tries to access a TGS for which TGS will go to reply back to a client moment it gets a reply back from a ticket granting server it is getting a permission to access the specified server so we will go to discuss these six messages in detail as I said in the first step two messages are exchanged between a client and a server so the server here involved is authentication server so the first message one is moving from client to a authentication server this arrow indicates the same and message 2 is mo moving in opposite direction that is from authentication server to a client in the first message C client puts its identity over here ID so actually the C here is an ID of a user who wants to communicate with the server so in this message client is requesting authentication server uh, for a permission to communicate with TGS and this time field is here indicating say the uh, basically it is for to indicate at what time the C is logged in and how much duration it wants to communicate to specify regarding that this time field is used then R1 indicates the nouns that is generated by client 
and in the second message that is moving from authentication server to a client it includes a session key kc tgs which is supposed to be going to be used between a ticket granting server and client so that key and time information which was sent by a client to a as the nouns which was sent by a client to a as and identity of ticket granting server again which is generated by client itself all these things are encrypted using long term key of client which is shared between client and a authentication server so this particular information is now encrypted using a secret key of c and apart from that it also provides a ticket to a ticket granting server so that is tgt ticket to a ticket granting uh, server so this includes the information of a session key which is in the encrypted form so this is only possible to decrypt for a tgs because this information is again encrypted using a long term session key shared between as and a tgs so hold this information especially this includes a session key which is encrypted using a secret key that is shared between these two entities okay these two entities so whatever the secret key that is shared between them using that this information is encrypted so tgs so where it includes the identity of client and time duration for which it wants to log deal with it so this all this information will going to be sent back to a client now moment a client gets this ticket to communicate with the tgs ticket granting server it starts its activity in message 3 in message 3 c forwards uh, the tgt to a tgs that is ticket granting ticket to a ticket granting server from where tgs extracts the session key so apart from that c proves the knowledge of session key by creating this information okay so this authenticator c that is to prove that it has a knowledge regarding session key so using a session key it encrypts this information and it passes this encrypted information in the form of authenticator to a tgs so moment tgs uh, gets the ticket from that it extracts the session key using that session key it decrypts this information from which it will come to know that this message has come from authenticated client apart from that c also generates a new nouns which will going to be used between c and tgs so moment a uh, tgs gets this information so it will pass the information back to a client so the most important part of the message that goes from tgs to a client is that that is ticket s which contains a session key which is supposed to be used between a server and a client so it is something like a ticket that what we have discussed previously so this is a ticket which is generated by tgs which is meant to meant for a client to deal with the server so this ticket has a session key okay so using this session key following information are encrypted like time tkcs and the c's identity the kcs is that is short term key or that is a session key that is supposed to be going to be used by a c with a server okay all these are encrypted by using the secret key that is going to be shared between tgs and a server like previous message 
this ticket is meant for the server so that session key information will going to be passed through this ticket to the server and the session key which is supposed to be used between server and a client will going to be present over here which is encrypted using a say uh, session key of c and tgs so along with that it also encrypts the nouns which was generated by a client and that time information and the server with which it wants to communicate its id is also encrypted so all these messages are sent back to a c now in step 3 the step 3 is basically uh, meant for communication of client and server so basically here the authentication of client and the server happens so in the fifth message client forwards a server the ticket that containing a session key that is kcs and c also creates and sends to a to an s an authenticator by encrypting uh, encrypting this with the timestamp with a session key of kcs okay now now yes extract that kcs from the ticket and s verifies authenticator that is generated by c so whatever the authenticator that is created by c will going to be verified by uh, s and s then increments the timestamp and encrypts it with the fresh session key so the timestamp which was generated in the authenticator that timestamp information will be there that will going to be incremented by one because it was generated by the client and increment increment incre incrementing of this time tap information indicates that so it this action is performed by the server and encrypts this using a session key that is supposed to be shared between client and a server so this it passes back to a client this encrypted timestamp say authenticate yes to see since it's a creation uh, creations requires a knowledge of kgs use of this timestamp also prevents a kind of a replay attack this completes a kerberos system now we'll discuss regarding biometrics a biometric is a biological feature or a characteristic of a person that uniquely identifies him or her over his lifetime. Common forms of biometric identification include face recognition, voice recognition, manual signatures and fingerprints. More, recent, more recently, patterns in the iris, iris of a human eye and DNA have been used so the identification of a human being based on say patterns in the iris of a geometric forms were first proposed as an alternative or complement to a password passwords are based on what user knows commonly used id cards including personal smart cards are based on what a person has a biometric on the other hand links the identity of a person to his uh, physiological or behavioral characteristics the two main processes involved in biometric system are enrollment and recognition in enrollment phase the subject's biometric sample is acquired. The essential feature of the sample is sample are extracted to create a reference temp a template. Sometimes multiple samples are taken and multiple templates stored to increase the accuracy of the match in subsequent recognition phase. Biometric templates are typically stored in authentication server. They may also be securely stored in person's smart card or e-passport. 
the second phase of biometric system is recognition in this phase a fresh biometric sample of a person is obtained as in the enrollment phase the biometric template of a person is created and this is then compared with the reference templates to determine the extent of match biometric is used in at least two different situations one in first is in authentication or identity verification second one is in identification the characteristics of good biometric systems are universal universal universality uniqueness performance ease speed and accuracy in biometric system the distance between the two templates the one is a fresh biometric sample and the second one is stored template so the distance between a stored template and a fresh sample will be measured so this will go to call it as d if this distance between a fresh and a stored sample is small then the match is closer if the distance is large then there will be no match between a two based on this theory most of the biometric systems work let us consider a iris recognition system in iris recognition system an iris iris scan is processed to create a string called iris code the length of this string is 2048 bits so the distance between two iris code that is one which is stored one which is freshly taken will be measured and this distance normally will be expressed in a hamming distance one such example is shown over here this is what is the given photo which will going to be compared with a different templates which are stored in the system and the distance between this template and the other template will going to be measured and the one which exhibits a the d value a smaller will going to be taken as the say will be used for authentication purpose so in this case this photo will going to match with this based on this it actually it is a kind of a pattern recognition act where the one is to one match which will show that uh, she is the one she will be authenticated because her photograph is already stored over here let us discuss regarding two case studies one is fingerprints and second one is iris scan let us talk regarding fingerprint fingerprint is an impression left by ridges and valleys of a human finger each individual finger exhibits distinctive pattern during the enrollment and recognition phase the image of a fingerprint is taken by placing it on a scanner during the recog recognition phase the input template must match with the pattern stored in the database the simplest approach involves identification of distinctive patterns formed by ridges and these are called as singularities they are arch loop and whorls arch the ridge starts from one side of the finger and forms an arc and ends on the other side loop the ridge starts from the end at the same side of the finger and whorls means certain cir circular things that are present on the finger normally we uh, identify them as a shanka and chakra on the fingers next is iris scan the iris 
is a thin opaque diaphragm of, of smooth muscle situated in front of the lens in the human eye. It is annular shape surrounds the pupil. The intricate patterns of the iris appear be unique. Two identical twins have iris patterns that are different as those of two unrelated individuals. The patterns of iris are also stable with age. So in most of the say in recognition systems nowadays iris is widely used. Same iris idea is also used in other cards. This completes uh, authentication chapter. In the next class, we will start discussing regarding the IP sec security at network layer. Thank you.